How you guys doing tonight? Good. 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 All right. We're going to try to keep this, uh, as I said earlier, somewhat. Uh, this is not going to be the most lengthy presentation. A lot of the stuff I'm going to be talking to you about tonight, you're actually going to get. We're going to send out uh, in an email as well, uh, so you can read through some of the details. So I'm going to skim a lot of the surface, uh, but we're going to talk to you a little bit about why we're here tonight, what we're trying to get involved with, and what we're trying to enlist more dads uh, to help with. Um, First of all, uh, the program's name is Watchdog Dads. Um, and the program itself is designed ultimately to get fathers, uncles, father figures, grandfathers, a little more involved uh, in the active life uh, of the children's school. Uh, that's the, the basic purpose of it. Uh, and there's a couple key reasons for that. Uh, ultimately, what you need to know about Watchdog Dads, it's a program that's based out of Kansas City. Um, it's actually been um, promoted uh, and recommended from a couple different presidents. It's been cited by the White House as kind of the easiest and best ways of getting dads and, and, and uh, males involved in school. Um, ultimately, how many of you have volunteered in a classroom before? Yeah, a few I did as well. Uh, I have to admit that I, after about an hour of cutting things out, I was like thinking I'm not going to be volunteering in a classroom again. Um, that's just my own confession. Uh, this program is focused on getting dads and male role models involved in different ways around the school. Uh, in being a presence on the playground. In doing things that ultimately can help the kids to see a positive male influence uh, around, in and around uh, the kind of school environment. Uh, if you haven't noticed, there's not a lot of uh, male teachers, at least at Odyssey, and so this is one of those awesome ways also of helping kind of the, the male role model uh, to have a little better presence uh, after school. So I'm going to talk to you a little bit more about what the program is. Uh, after I get through giving you some of that information, we're going to invite uh, uh, Pam Wire and Ms. Wire, our principal, up to give you a little bit about what the day-to-day -day activities would be from a watchdog dad. <coughs> after that, uh, we're going to share a little story about kind of the, the father-son connection. Uh, and then after that, we're just going to have you sign up and do some of those last-minute housekeeping things, and then, then we're done. Uh, so that's, that's the order of, order of uh, ceremony, if you will. Um, one of the most important things uh, about uh, this program is it's designed to get uh, dads more involved. I pulled a couple statistics and, they, and the program provides a couple things for me to just kind of share about what is the importance of having an active father, active male role model, an active male influence in the life of a child. Um, Statistically, children with involved, loving fathers or father figures are significantly more likely to do well in the school, to have a healthy self-esteem, to exhibit empathy and pro-social behavior, to avoid uh, high-risk behaviors such as drug use, truancy, and criminal activity, compared with children who have uninvolved fathers. Uh, based on census information and some National Association of Principals and some of those national organizations that really track a lot of information about kids and how our, how our kids are doing in school. Uh, there's a couple bullet points here I wanted to share. Um, unfortunately, this top one hits, old, hits kind of close to home for recent activities, but 63% uh, of youth suicides are from fatherless homes or from children without active father figures. 90% uh, of all homeless and runaway children are from fatherless homes. 85% of children who show behavior disorders come from fatherless homes. 80% of rapists with anger problems come, with, uh, come from fatherless homes. And 91, excuse me, 71% of all high school dropouts come from fatherless homes or homes without, where there is no active father or male influence or role model around. So that is, some of those statistics, when they start popping up on the radar screen, those are the things that make a program like Watchdog Dad so very important. Uh, because uh, I don't know about any of you, but I know I was raised without an active. Uh, my father left when I was uh, six weeks old. So for me, a program like this is something that can be really important. Um, so that's my little kind of spiel at the beginning to just say that's the importance of the program. We're trying to help kids uh, to see a balanced perspective of the active male as well as, you know, obviously the active uh, female in the life as well. As well. Um, all right, a couple, couple key things. There really are two main objectives to the program itself. 
to provide a positive adult male role model to students uh, and to enhance the school's security by providing an extra set of eyes and ears. Now, the first thing I want to tell you when I read that statement, let me just kind of bring up the first question. Have there been issues with school security? Not that we're aware of. This is not in response to some sort of an issue that's already happening that we're aware of. Um, this is simply a program, and this happens to be one of the benefits of that program, of having uh, another male or two roaming the hallways, looking at things, keeping an eye out. It's just, it's just going to increase security. That's just the bottom line. Um, but that positive male role model is another key attribute of what the program can really help to provide. Um, one of the things that you may see around the hallway a lot, and I'll just, I'll just bring this up because I know it's uh, happened recently. Some of you may know that um, we had a, a suicide recent in the community. Um, two, second day of school, uh, a young man from the high school just down the road, uh, and that was attributed in some way to some, some bullying activities. He was invited to a fight, he didn't want to show up for the fight, and the newspapers reported that a bunch of kids went to his house and started egging him on. And the next day, he took his own life. That's bullying. That's a key highlight of what bullying can do. Having an extra set of eyes and actively involved adults, males in the school, watching out for that kind of activity, that bullying stuff, uh, can really help. Uh, and especially right now, uh, as you warm the halls, you'll see a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, programs a lot of posters and things around talking about bullying, and that's one of the great things about the program is it can really help um, have an extra pair of eyes looking out for some of those things. Um, so who are the Watchdog Dad volunteers? Uh, can I get all of you to raise your hand real quick? That would be you. <laughs> See how easy that was? Um, the, the, the point of the program is that it is volunteer. Uh, we're not looking for a massive commitment. Uh, I'll tell you right now, so there's no suspense. Our hope is that you will sign up for a day, one day. If you want to sign up for more, day, more days than that, great. If your schedule allows you to work multi take multiple days, fantastic. Ultimately, you'll be taking a day, and Ms. Wire will get into some of the details here in a little bit. You're taking a day to be the watchdog dad here at Odyssey. Starts in the morning, ends when the ends when the kids get out of school, uh, and that's the way it goes. Uh, and Mr. Wire will walk you through what the program is, what you'd be doing, and that kind of stuff. It's not the cutting out paper graphs. Um, so ultimately, the program itself is designed that, so that the winners of this program are everybody involved. You as individuals, myself included, we get to win because we're a little more involved. We see some of the day-to-day -day stuff that's happening with uh, with our sons and daughters and with the kids in the school. Uh, it's great, so when, you, when they come home that day, you can say, when they're telling you their story about what they did in the classroom, you can say, oh yeah, I remember, I was there, I saw that, that thing. It creates a little bit better connection that way. The kids win because ultimately they see that adult male role model uh, there in the classroom. The faculty and the administration of Odyssey win uh, because there is that extra set of eyes and ears hanging around and, and helping to steer things in the right direction. Uh, so with that, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to invite <coughs> Pam uh, up, and she's going to share with you a little bit about um, the program and probably fill in some of the blanks that I missed along the way. Okay, thanks, Jeff. First of all, I'd like to just mention that um, we actually started talking about this program last spring um, when we heard about Meridian Ranch Elementary out in Falcon has been doing this program for a couple of years, and they have just one dad that kind of keeps it going, and my hope is that um, we will start this tonight, kick it off for the first semester of school, get a, enough people maybe to sign up to fill up quite a bit of our calendar, maybe not every day, but to have a watchdog um, at least once a week in our school for the first semester. And then in January, we'll do our annual Donuts for Dads, and we'll invite you back along with all of the other dads in our school and get our calendar filled up for the second half of the year. So if you can commit today to one day, to be at your child's school for the first half of the year. Um, I, we think this program will actually grow itself and then we'll get more and more dads interested. Now you might have noticed that there are a couple of guys around the, the room tonight that are already wearing the Watchdog Dad shirt. And the reason is because last spring when I started thinking about how would we do this, I happened to see these three guys in the building quite a bit. So Ryan Sherman wearing our Watchdog Dad shirt over there and Jeff Peters and then also Kenny V. Hill who is also here, um, I said, you guys want to help me get this started? So they are called Top Dogs. 
not hot dogs, but <laughs> top dogs. And they're going to actually um, help start this. But then the idea is that it will really keep it going. The momentum of other people seeing dads in our school will, will keep it going. So um, tonight you have in your packet an order form for a shirt in case you want to buy your own shirt. Um, we ask that if you do buy a shirt, you only wear it when you're here at school because it represents our school in this program. If you don't want to buy a shirt, that's okay. We've got extras. So if you come in on your day and you need a shirt, we've got t-shirts you can put right over your shirt and wear one of ours. Um, the other thing we want to do is we want to have your child wear a shirt. We want your child to feel really special if you are here on your day for your kids. So they get to wear a shirt too. And when you come in in the morning, we're going to take your picture. That's the first thing we're going to do is take a picture for our wall of fame, which is going up probably tomorrow. And um, so kids will always see whose dads have been here. And so that'll make your child feel really special on the day that you're here. So what happens? It's your day. You've signed up. It's September 15th. It's your day and you show up. And we're going to put you to work right away. And as you can see in your packet of information, there is a daily schedule. You don't have to bring that with you. We're going to have these ready when you walk in the door. You come into the office with your child. We take your picture and we give you a clipboard. And from then on, your day gets really, really busy. Um, as you can see, there isn't a moment that you're not doing something. Um, you're going to be spending quite a bit of time in your child's classroom. So if you have more than one child, we're going to let you decide how to split up your time between your two or three children's classrooms. But we really want your child to feel special. We also want your child's friends to feel special. We want you to make connections with other kids in that classroom because there are a whole lot of kids that don't have a dad figure in their life. So you're going to actually be the surrogate dad for a lot of other kids as well. Um, so when you come in, you're going to have the schedule. And the first thing we need your help with is our parking lot. I don't know if you've ever dropped off your kids in the morning, but that's a busy place for about 15 minutes in the morning, 15 minutes at the end of the day. And we could use some help. And it's a tough job, let me tell you. But I think your presence out there with all of our people that have duty will make a difference. So we'll put you out in the parking lot right away and greeting kids. Everybody's going to love to see the, who the watchdog dad is for that day. We've already got kids, second graders, coming up and saying, my dad's going to be a watchdog. They're very excited about it. So we want to keep that excitement going to get even more dads in here. So after you greet kids at the front door, you're going to help with morning announcements. We've got an intercom system. We want to be able to have you be a part of our morning announcements so everybody knows that you'll be here that day and they know they can talk to you if they see you on the playground, at lunch, in their classroom, wherever it is. After that, you're going to go to your child's classroom. And like I said, if you have more than one child, split those up accordingly. Then we're going to have you go outside to our cottages, our cosmic cottages, which are really modulars. That's a cute name designed by kids for modulars. And we really would love to have those classrooms always feel connected as our part of our whole school. So we're going to put you out there first with our third grade, two fourth grade classes, and also our STEM lab is out there. So you get to visit those classrooms. Then we always need a little help in the library. Mrs. Johnson, our library person, has books that need to be shelved, and I know she could always use an extra pair of hands. Also, kids come in and out of the library. It's open all day. So they're going to see you. You'll be highly visible in our library. Our youngest students are still trying to figure out what a lunch number is. So our kindergartners always need help opening milk cartons and applesauce containers and all sorts of things. And that's a great way to get to know the youngest Odyssey Commons. After that, we want you to have lunch with your children. So whatever time your kids eat lunch, we want you to have lunch with them. We want you to go to recess with them. We want all the kids in that class to know that you're here and you're, you know, you're Susie's dad and you're going to have lunch with Saul. So you're a, a really special guest. So kind of in and out through the lunchtime will be a great time for you to be um, interacting with kids, talking to them, asking how their day is going, kind of helping them problem solve with any kind of conflicts they're having with friends or anything they're struggling with in school. If it's having a hard time with math, we can talk about math and really promote it. You talk about your career. Kids really want to know, what do you do after you get out of school? What do you do in telling them about that? Then we have um, some um, other classes we'd like you to check in on. Music, art, and PE are right here, up here in front of the school. 
Then there are our other classrooms. You've been outside, now we'd like you to visit all of our inside. Kindergarten, first, second, fourth, and fifth are all inside the building. And then at the very end of the day, the last 20 minutes, we want to <coughs> preserve a time for you to go into the library and take a survey. Because your interactions here at school and how it goes for you are, is information we need as we perfect our program, perfect what we ask of you, and to make it the best it can be. We'll get those results about um, once a month. Those will be available to us through the Watchdog Dad program. The also, also, the other thing, on the bottom you can see that it says check the calendar and call the next week's Watchdog Dad and remind him of his day. So even if there's nobody the very next day, if you would look and see who signed up next after your date, their phone number is going to be on your clipboard. And so just before you leave for the day, call them and say, um, hi, Mr. Smith, I'm just calling to remind you that you've signed up to be a watchdog dad on Thursday, September 16th. And that's it. And then at the end of the day, we've got the same issue with dismissal, where we could use another pair of eyes to help kids and parents find each other and to keep our pull through lane as safe as it can be. Okay? So that's kind of what a day would look like. And like Jeff said, if everybody could sign up for one, that would be amazing. If you can sign up for more than one, that's great. If you have a schedule that allows for it, you know, we will take you as often as you can be here. But we understand that that might not work for everybody the same. We will take you whenever we can get you. So then I wanted to just spend a couple minutes kind of talking about what you do do and what you don't do. Because there's a little bit of that as well that I want to make sure. Things that you are not your responsibility and we want to make sure that you don't feel that you have to handle some of those. Um, like I said about the t-shirt, we would love for you to wear a t-shirt when you're here at school to represent the program at the school. We really want you to be encouraging, positive, um, be the really outgoing, like Jeff said, we don't have enough men in our school. We would love for you to be that, you know, that guy that's a positive influence on all kids, whomever you talk to. Helping with traffic, monitoring hallways, um, just monitoring the building. Wow, is that back door been left open? Is somebody holding that open? That's not a safe thing. Helping us at lunchtime, assisting at recess, eating lunch with kids, playing or refereeing a basketball game on the playground, reading with classes, practicing sight words and math facts with flashcards, um, just all those things that being involved would mean. Things that you wouldn't do, you would never have to get involved in any kind of a discipline issue. So if you see kids making a bad choice, we've got lunch monitors, we've got teachers, we've got adult staff that we would ask that you would refer those students to. Now if they're just having a conflict and need some talking through about how to do that, that would be a great thing for you to help with. But if you're seeing it's bigger than that and it needs to go to a staff member, please refer them to that. Um, we wouldn't ask that you would ever be alone with a student for their protection as well as your own. We would ask that you would never go into a student's restroom but use our staff bathroom in the front of the office. Um, we would ask that you would never sell your t-shirts or do anything that isn't approved by the program. Um, and any, any conduct that wouldn't be um, representative of the program. Now, this is not all encompassing and I understand that. And there may be things that you have questions about. I hope that you would come ask me, what do you think about this? What should I do? We are here to help you as well. And we don't want you to ever feel uncomfortable about anything a student might tell you or that you might get involved in. That's, that's not what we're asking of you. Um, there also might be some times, and I'm going to say this in the training, so that um, if I see that you're doing something and I think, not really sure, I might come and talk to you. And please know that if I come to you and I say, oh, can I just visit with you about something, it's meant for your protection as well as the students. So I, I may reserve that right to be able to come up and have that conversation if, if I think anything, we just need to talk about it. So. Are there any questions about the schedule or do's and don'ts? Anything I can answer? Yes. Did your kids only have one per day? Or do you have a problem with there being more than one here on any, on any one day? I don't have a problem with having more than one. See, that is a really, really good thing. But um, if I could only choose between having one on one day and one the next, versus two on the same day, I would prefer to have spread that out if possible. Good question. Yes? What about half days? We would take you on a half day. Yeah. And actually, there are some days that are on the calendar that are marked as half days if we have an early release. So if those work for you, that's great. If you could only do a half day, please sign up for it. We'll take you whenever. Yes? Constant dictates no, but if we do have a scheduled conflict, 
what's the time frame you want us to let us know in advance, at least a week or what have you, depending on if the work schedule does make sure? Yep, if, if you know that ahead of time, that you've got a conflict, you can't make your day, you can call Amanda in the office, and if you want to switch it, she can check for you, she will have access to the calendar, and we can make it work if you need us to. And we're also going to be putting together a group on Facebook that you know we're try, going to try and get all the dads to be a part of. It's going to be private, so other people can't look at it and see if they're you know what days dads are going to be here, what days they're not. But let's say you can't make it to the school on your day, you can go on there and say you know I'm not able to make it in on my day. Is there another dad out there that can pick up my day for me? And that way we can help everybody help everybody to be able to cover down if something were to come up, you know, family emergency work, whatnot. And then one of us top dogs, if somebody's not going to pick that up, I'm sure we can work between the three of us to also try and help cover on those dates as well. Perfect. And we know there are going to be questions that come up since we're starting a program and as, as this is a launch. Um, we'll, we'll troubleshoot some of those things that come up. Um, we don't have all of the all those little you know, secrecies that come up figured out, but we'll be absolutely like, oh, I wonder what we should do about that. Okay, next I would like to invite Kenny Behill to come up and kind of just share an inspirational dad-son story. So a dad-son story, but going off of what Jeff was talking about, <coughs> um, I was reading one, team, one uh, statistic here, and this is about teen pregnancy. It says research and child development has shown uh, conclusively that teens without involved fathers are twice as likely to be involved in early sexual activity. And girls, girls, and I wasn't ready for this, are seven more times more likely to get pregnant as adolescents. And as a father with three daughters, that kind of caught my attention there. Um, again, my name is Kenny Hill. I have two kids that are, that are coming to Odyssey, one is in the fourth grade, one is in the third grade, and this is just kind of a story off of, um, off of a, a, just a dad-son story, so I'll read it to you here. One of the most um, warming stories in Olympic history happened in 1992 in Barcelona, Spain, as a young man named Derek Redmond was competing for the Olympic gold medal in the 400 meter race. And what makes this story more appealing is that um, in the 1988 Olympics, just 90 seconds before he was about to climb into the, the blocks to start the race, he tore his Achilles tendon and was out of the race. And as many of you guys might know, an Achilles tear is almost ending for, for any kind of athlete. Um, baseball, basketball, football, it doesn't really matter, and especially for a sprinter. Um, despite the obstacles, Derek Redmond went through five surgeries and some grueling therapy and training, and then four, later, four years later found himself in the semifinal in the 1992 Olympics. And then the gun sounded, and Derek was off to a good start, but about 15 seconds into the 41 second race, he injured his hamstring and went down before he actually finished. So, I don't know if any one of you guys have seen that race, but I seen that race, I remember watching that race, and he didn't just go down, you know, limping, and then sit down on the track. He actually went down, went down pretty hard. And then when the race, when the race winners crossed the finish line, the crowd was astonished to look back and see Derek struggling to his feet. And he began hobbling toward the finish line. And the crowd rose to their feet, and in immense pain, he continued his journey towards the finish line. At the other part of the stadium, a man came barreling from the stands, climbing over a four and a half foot concrete wall attempting to get to Derek. A security guard tried to stop the man, but couldn't. And when the man reached Derek, he tried to put his arms around the racer, and Derek, not knowing who he was, he pushed his arms aside. Then Derek heard the man speak. It was his father, Jim Redman. And Jim looked at his son and told him, you don't have to do this. And his son said that he did. And then his dad said, well, we'll finish this together. And he wrapped his arms around him, and they finished the race together. That day, Derek Redmond didn't walk away with the gold medal, but he walked away with something greater. He walked away with the truth that his dad, upon seeing his son in pain, left his seat in the stands and got out of his comfort zone to reach to his child and made a positive difference in his life. Now, fathers tonight, children across the state and the nation are looking for a dad who will see their children and their children want to see their dads actually leave their seat and become a part of their lives. 
get out of their comfort zone and onto the floor of their life. A dad who will fight off every obstacle and, and, and that keeps them from being in their children's life. A dad who will race to them and put his arms around them and keep them in the right lane and help them finish the race together. So for me, when I read this and, and they start talking about getting out of the stands and us dads getting involved in, in, in our kids' lives, a lot of the times I look at this as I get home at seven o'clock at night. Most of the times during the school year, my kids are in bed. If they're not in bed, they're getting ready to go to bed. When we get them in bed, then it's kind of download time for my wife telling me this is what happened, this is what happened, and this is what happened at school today. And then the next day I get to tell them good job, or I get to discipline them. And that's what us as fathers, we kind of fall into that role is we're the disciplinary, we get to be the secondary coach, the secondary person to, to tell our kids good job, but as a volunteer coming into this, into the classroom and the kids actually seeing us, it's not just for our kids, it's for everybody else's kids as well. For the fathers who are enlisted, the fathers who are overseas, that their kids haven't seen their, their parents. A lot of the times, being a volunteer in, in the school, I get to volunteer a lot during the, during the winter time because I own a concrete company and between November and February, we're not doing anything. So I get to be at home, so I'm in the school quite a bit. And there's been numerous amounts of times where I was just walking through the hallways, and I've had kids that know me and kids that don't know me that will come up to me and actually start telling me something that happened at their house that night because they just need somebody to talk to. And that's what we're there for. That's what we're really trying to put out there as fathers because a lot of the times it's the moms that are here. You can come into school any day of the week and find a mom inside here, inside the classroom, making copies, in the lunchroom, out, out on the playground, somewhere, but we want to get our faces inside here. And as we go through this program, as the year progresses, and we start to get to know each other, then we can start to get other people out there. We are all talking about buying one of the, the big dog suits, so the dog that's on here, like the Chick-fil-A cow that's outside, get one of us to be outside there and encourage a lot of these other dads to be outside there and not just that but also talk to the wives of the, of the kids that are coming here as well so that they that way they can encourage their, their husbands to spend some time in but as the dads that are here first because this is really the first meeting that we have even though we we say we're the top dogs or or you know um, Pam was the one to talk to us first really Everybody who's in this room right now has already made a commitment, who, who is already interested in this program. So if we all can dedicate a day, dedicate two days, one day a month, or even come here on lunch, or go outside for recess and just show our faces so that way the kids get to know us, I think that right there is a huge deal. And that's a way of us getting out of the stands and actually taking part in our kids' lives instead of just having that as, as the moms. So. That's the story. Thank you guys for being here. And I've, you'll come up and talk about the t-shirts and registration and everything else. Thank you guys. Hi, my name's Ryan. I've got three kids that are here at the school, spread out between kindergarten, second, and fifth grade. So I've spent quite a bit of time here. And, you know, I noticed it when Ms. Wire was bringing it up to me last year that we just didn't have enough guys in the schools. And so it was just kind of kind of hit close to home. I know quite a few kids in other school districts and stuff that don't have dads in the picture or dads that are out of state, dads that are deployed. And so it's, you know, kind of our way to help them. And we're going to have a huge calendar that's set up. I'm not sure exactly where we're going to have it up yet in the school but if we could get you know when you put your name on there first and last name and then your student's name that way 15 minutes prior to you getting out of here every day when you're doing the survey you'll be able to call the next dad in line so that they you know if they slip their mind they remember they've got a reminder call to let them know hey you're you're in here tomorrow if there's anything that you need to pass on pass on notes and such. Um, in your little packets, you do have a price list for shirts. Go 
the most generic shirt is just the, the one that I'm wearing. It's $11 for a small, medium, or large. It's a little bit more for the, uh, I believe it's the 3X through 5X. Miss Wire's got the book on that one. And then it's 18 for a long sleeve shirt. They also have the polos, they've got hats. Um, if you want your kids to have their own shirt. <clears throat> we had a couple, I know Mr. V Hill's child and one of my children have the shirt on and well, they went outside, I should have put on my one that is in here with me now, but you know, they've got different styles. You don't have to wear this style. They do have the more of the military style, you know, that can be worn. So it just, it really kind of varies if you want to buy your own. If you do, you can let Miss Manning know. Um, if you want to purchase one. And then, as far as the, the group goes, if we're going to send out notes of, you know, basically what went on to everybody in the school. Moms, dads, whoever's email address Miss Manning has. That way dads that couldn't be here, they could still get the notes and, you know, get in on it with all of us that are here tonight. If you could reply to that with, if you want to be invited into the, uh, the Facebook group, reply to that so that Miss Manning knows that it's okay to hand over your email address for us to send out an invite. Before you guys take off tonight, uh, you'll see there are, we do have the calendar over there. Um, Ryan's got, if you, guys want, if you guys know you want to order shirts right now, and you can fill that part out, you can get it for Ryan. What we're going to do is um, calendar, I think it's the full semester that's listed out there. Sometimes you just don't know, like three months from now, what are you doing on a Thursday? Um, so we're going to take the calendar after tonight. So if you fill it out tonight, if, you, if there's a day or two, that you're like, yeah, I want to, I want to hit that date. That's going to be my day. Fill it out tonight. But after tonight, what we're going to do is we're going to slice the calendar so that it's just in one month on top of like a normal calendar is. Uh, and it'll be put up on a bulletin board just around the corner from the office. So when you come in, pick up the kids, drop off, whatever else, you can just walk in, look, oh, I'm going to sign my name up, and you can do it at that point too. Yeah? Well, if we can't sign tonight, can we call and say what day we can do or see what days are open as far as because? Yeah. You know, yeah. yeah, absolutely. So just call the main office. Call right? the main office, call Amanda, okay. and she'll either do it or she'll put it through to me. Okay. Um, either way. Can everybody hear that question? So if you have if you have a day that's that's open and you haven't signed up on the calendar and you do want to volunteer, then all you got to do is call the front office, talk to Amanda, and she'll sign you up for that. So that way you can come in that day. The other thing to note is when you come in, it's one of the questions we had early on. Um, so are we just really just letting anybody who wants to come in and spend their day with the kids? No. Uh, when you come in, uh, you'll have uh, Amanda, the, you'll, you'll notice even during the school hours, you have to be buzzed in. This is a this is school's on lockdown 24-7. This is just the way it was built. Um, they're going to take your, your uh, driver's license when you come in. It'll be scanned through, and that performs a type of a background check. Um, and then you'll be given a, a sticker with your picture on it um, that'll let you wear during the day, and that's kind of your pass. So that other folks, the other administrators, the other staff here know that yeah, you're, you're, they're good for the day. Thanks for coming out. If you guys have other questions, like you said, well, we're going to send out an email to all, to all of you, but we're going to send it to everybody in the, in the school. Uh, it'll have a lot of the information we've already shared today. And please uh, sign up for a couple days before you take off. And uh, I want to actually, Ms. Uh, Ms. Thompson and uh, Ms. Wire here, I want to give them a round of applause for really kind of taking the initiative.